against Nestle. Can I get y'all to stand up against Nestle? Hold up those signs. Be proud. We're going to fight Nestle. We're going to get Governor Kitts over to stop Nestle from coming to our state and bottling our water. Today, we're standing united with over 30,000 Oregonians from all over the state, from all walks of life, to call upon Governor Kitzhopper to do the right thing and protect our water from a multinational corporation whose only interest in Oregon is to profit off of our public resources. Our first speaker today is Tim Norgren, who is a resident of the Dalles in the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, he traveled all the way here to represent a community that really does oppose Nestle Bali water in their backyard. Here's Tim. Hey, my name is Tim. I live up the river in the gorge, in the Dells. Uh, like most folks in the region on both sides of the river who make up the local gorge community as we know ourselves up there, uh, I lean toward rural places intentionally. I stay there by choice. <laughs> um, part of that is a preference for calm, for less traffic and crowds, and relatively less pollution, including noise and advertising. I admit when I was asked to speak in public, even just a few words, part of me wanted to scream like a little kid and run away. <laughs> Uh, but I also realize that this is too big an issue to ignore or run from because there's a bigger picture than what we can see in the candidates' debates. And what we can look at most, might look at most like a casual chess move by an outside player could set local residents up for a tragically difficult endgame struggle over resources that should be ours in the first place. That's something we have to deal with. The Gores was designated a national scenic area because that's what we, the people, agree we hold sacred. We don't consider these mountains to be exploitable resources. And we don't consider these rivers and forests and the clear spring pouring out of the forest floor to be exploitable resources. A woman from Mosier was quick to express anger that Nestle does, doesn't just want to bottle water, the local water, they don't just want that, they want the best water. They want the very best that the Gorge has and they want all of it. She's got a good point. Communities in Washington have been struggling with low water table for years to the point that folks buying land and Benjamin and white salmon can no longer drill wells and actually build on them. Folks in the Oregon side have a higher water table. Um, but we found due to intensive drilling, many of the wells are connected. And excessive runoff from agriculture threatens to contaminate wells and watersheds over time. Um, so as access to water becomes a global situation, we have to ask whether we'll source ours from this spring we're gifted with here, or will we buy petroleum lace water from Nestle in plastic bottles, pretending not to notice our sense of impotence as we shop? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's one carrot that Nestle holds out for some of us, which is the idea of increased employment. Um, but we know from experience, with multinational players anyway, that there's no interest but resource extraction. Nestle's proved that, pumping full throttle during water shortages. All we can reasonably expect are lower wage, non-union jobs where workers feel expendable. No rights, just expendable. And it's just not worth losing our uh, water over, the best water we have. Looking closer to into life in the gorge, you find groups like Citizens for a Local Economy with their Go Local campaign and the Gorge Grown Food Network. They're working to build a better local food system. Um, we all also have a great many people who know little about the issues but genuinely want, don't want the exploitation. They just don't want it. Others know some about it, but they really have time for action. There's one farmer I talked to at the market the other day. He said this. I, he said, "I grow food. I don't grow money." I don't think they should be coming in here and taking what's ours to make money. I don't believe in it. You can tell them I said that, he said. <laughs> it was awesome. I had those to multiple faith groups in the smallest Occupy camp in the country, and you find a lot of people who genuinely care about our, our health, our resources, yeah. our economy. <laughs> Unfortunately, with relatively small population spread over a lot of different issues in the gorge, a lot of different townships and so forth, um, it can be pretty daunting to take on corporate vultures. Um, so I'd like to make it really clear that uh, contrary to what some folks would have you believe, there's a whole bunch of folks up in the gorge who are really grateful to all of you to be here, yep. to be banding together, and uh, all the people all over the state getting together and, and backing us up, taking an interest in what's happening up there. I'd like to thank you all for actually 
get in and get with us, fight this corporate piece of crap. Um, thanks. Our next speaker is Barbara Willer. She served as an interim Multnomah County Commissioner in 2010, and she's committed to ensuring our water remains a public right. In 2010, I had the privilege to work with a number of the groups that are here to um, take on the Nestle issue in the gorge and to meet with the people in Cascade Locks and have a conversation with them. We had a good conversation. I met with some of their uh, city council people, but in the end, we agreed to disagree that um, selling our water for jobs is not the discussion we want to have in this state. So I'm happy to be here today to support this because we know that we are facing a planetary crisis on many fronts, but none hits home so closely as water. We cannot live without fresh water. It's a shared legacy, a public trust, and a co collective responsibility to ensure that our water remains pure and we have access to it, and all have access to it. Selling water to private companies who then bottle it and resell it back to us is wrong. To allow Nestle's or any other company to take water from one of the gorge's watersheds where fish are currently using it and trucking it through the gorge, which already has some smog issues when we have our wonderful sunny days, is not only unnecessary for our needs, but a violation of belief that water is a human right. is bad for the environment. It takes up to 2,000 times, 2,000 times, more energy to produce a gallon of bottled water than a gallon of tap water. Manufacturing America's water bottles consumes 17.6 million barrels of oil each year. It keeps us dependent on the oil industry. And about three gallons of water are used to produce one gallon of bottled water. And not only is it using up a valuable resource, but only 25% of the bottled water out there gets recycled. I'm sure everybody's heard about the islands of plastic floating in our oceans. So not only are we selling a public resource water, we are causing more damage to our ecosystem and unnecessarily using other resources to create the bottled water. Bottled water presents health and safety issues. Chemical additives in the plastic bottles often cause diseases such as obesity, early puberty, and breast cancer. It's also a waste of money. Bull Run, our beautiful water, there's some of it over there. We have one of the best uh, water sources in the country. We have pristine water to drink out of. Does this make sense that we're gonna take our water, sell it to a corporation who ships it somewhere else and then sells it back to us? When you calculate the cost for a, for a gallon of bottled water, we're paying more than we pay for a gallon of gasoline, and we all don't like what we have to pay for gasoline. Tap water costs less than one cent a gallon. Why are we spending that kind of money? We've been duped by the marketing, by the advertising. It's one of the greatest hoaxes that have ever been played on the American people. are going to be footing the bill for the transportation costs of 200 trucks a day taking these bottles in and out. We already know the budget crisis we have in this state. We don't have money to waste on unnecessary things like bottled water. I'm pleased to say that there are local governments who are doing something about this. In 2010, I joined with my colleagues at Multnomah County to ban using taxpayer dollars to buy bottled water in Multnomah County within the government, Clark County. Clark County and uh, Vancouver have also joined in, just in Multnomah County alone, by not paying for bottled water inside our organization, we are saving $20,000. Now we know $20,000 could buy some more beds for homeless families, it could buy some more food. We don't need to be spending on things that we don't need. When I walked by the water fountain today uh, at one of the floors at Multnomah County, uh, it said 46,000 
and that's a, a water fountain that was put in so that people could walk by with their own bottles of water, not by bottled water. And so that fountain alone has saved over 46,000 bottled water, the equivalent of bottled water. So if, if Oregon continues down this road of bottling water and selling it, we're breaching the public trust doctrine. This would be the first time a state agency hands over water to Nestle. It's a breach of the public trust that we've, en we've entrusted to our elected officials for them to do that. It's basically a privatization of a public natural resource, one that we and other species need to survive. 30,000 Oregonians have told the governor, do not allow this to happen. But as the sign says, he's not taking a stand. He's staying in neutral. We need to ask the governor to advise the state agency that he oversees to not allow this to go forward. The state should pull out of the water exchange process in Cascade Locks. Yeah. We do not want our water sold to a public, to a private corporation so they can make money by selling it back to us at the cost of more than we would pay for it out of our taps. So we need to continue to stand firmly and say no to allowing Nestle or any other private com company to bottle our water. I really thank you for being here. Let's keep up the pressure on the governor and thank you again for being here. Uh, our next speaker is Terry Swear, who traveled all the way from Michigan to be with us today. Uh, she's a founding member and former president of Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation, a nonprofit grassroots group located in north central Michigan. She's appeared in acclaimed documentaries such as Flow and Blue Gold, and the group she founded in uh, Michigan has engaged in over eight years of fighting to protect waters of the Great Lake Basin against Nestle's bottling plans. Please give her a, wa a warm Oregonian welcome. see all of you here today. Let's, it's great. Just keep going together. Let's save the water in Cascade Locks. Yeah. I live in Macosta, a small town in northern Michigan. It's located in one of the poorest uh, counties. 48.5% of students attending K-12 through receive free or reduced lunches, and 29% of the families are below poverty level. I understand the economic and job situation that is also facing the people of Cascade Locks and other small communities, and how Nestle is trying to convince the public that it's moving into the area will change that. Let me tell you, it doesn't happen. Right. As Nestle moved into Michigan to privatize our water for its own profit, it announced that there would be no adverse impact to the natural resources. And Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation believed then and it has been proven in the courts that irreparable harm would occur to the waterways due to pumping by Nestle. Nestle came into Michigan two years before residents heard of the plan to withdraw 263 million gallons of spring water per year, divert it, bottle, and sell Nestle's brand, which is Ice Mountain, out of the watershed in Michigan. Nestle spent those two years meeting with Michigan government officials, from the governor to the local officials. Upon hearing of Nestle's plan 12 years ago, I helped form the grassroots organization, Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation. And I 
was its president for 11 years and now serve on its board. Along with Macosta, Nestle actively pursued other spring water sources and it now trucks municipal spring water in bulk from another small community about 30 miles from its existing plant. Now I would like to ask, has your governor turned a blind eye like Michigan's governor did to the private international company, company Nestle, who is here for its own profit and not for the citizens' benefit? Hey, show me governor I want to see a governor that has If we, if we do not let our voices be heard from the local to state level and higher, we could lose our rights to our waters to private companies like Nestle. Through the efforts of MCWC, lawsuits were filed against Nestle to preserve our water rights in the Great Lakes Basin. It is not reasonable for a large foreign corporation to take the water from the land and communities like Cascade Locks and other small towns. Water seems to go to whoever has the most money and there are no incentives for conservation because the more water you take, the more money you make. Oh. Nest Nestle was cautioned by the trial judge that it preceded its own risk in building its plant. True to form, Nestle pushed ahead in its building of the plant and continued to threaten the possible loss of jobs as a way to strong arm Michigan's governor and legislators. Nestle claimed to be a good neighbor company to our area, yet it continued to pump at high rates during a long period of low particip participation and lower recharge, even when there were dramatic impacts and damage to lakes, streams, and wetlands. Lives have changed for the people in Macosta and the members of Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation since Nestle came to Michigan. The issues have pitted neighbor against neighbor and friendships have been severed. Nestle has violated our lives directly and indirectly with telephone polling, private investigators, FBI visits to our homes, and a threatened slap suit which is a strategic lawsuit against public participation against my son. <laughs> Nestle has affected my family and others emotionally, physically, mentally, and financially. MCWC could not afford expensive lobbyists or PR agents like, like Nestle, but with strength of morals, heart, and loyalty. MCWC has and will continue to make Nestle accountable for the export of Michigan's waters. <laughs> Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation spent well over a million and a half dollars on its lawsuit against Nestle. And we have to continue to fundraise to uh, pay our legal and environmental expert, expert bills. I do not want to see this to happen to other pre private citizens. From my own experience, I know that Nestle fights to get what it wants. Nestle continued to fight the David and Goliath battle with Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation for over nine years. However, with our perseverance, we hold we won the court case against Nestle by reducing by reducing its pumping by nearly half. Nestle also agreed to lower its string pumping earlier during fish spawning and continue load pumping during the summer months to to take care of the stress to the already stressed streams and lakes. Even though we won, the lakes and streams will never be the same. I would caution the residents of 
Oregon to ask hard questions of Nestle and its elected or appointed government officials. And don't take Nestle's word for anything. Water grabbers like Nestle undermine the interest of our sixth generation residents who live on the lakes, streams, and the public that fishes, boats, swims, and enjoys our lakes and streams. The farmers who rely on our groundwater and industry, our economy, and the tourist industry that are so dependent on our water. Water is our heritage and our culture. It must be protected for future generations, not only in Michigan or here, but around the world. <laughs> Margaret Mead said it better than I ever could. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. You are to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Carrie. And this is why it's so important to kick Nestle out before they get a foothold in Oregon. We need to stop Nestle. Don't let them open up. Stop. Our last speaker is a lifelong Oregonian who has a love of the natural beauty of the state and believes in the sacredness of our public water resources. Sister Bridget Bauman is a sister of the Holy Names. And the sisters came to Oregon in 1859, the year we became a state, people. They've been here a long time and have been involved in teaching Oregon ever since. Literally hundreds have taught here and served in parish and social work. In 2008, after several years of investigation and prayerful reflection, the sisters took a stand that has led us to vigorous action to protect water as a sacred gift and basic human right for all. I love this group. You are so active. You are so involved. Keep it up. You are great. How many of you are native Oregonians? Put your hands up. Good. How many of you are Oregonians? All of you are. Yes. We are Oregonians. And I don't know about your families or what you're doing now, but my family has worked in the gorge, in the, in the wood industry, and we also have enjoyed the many benefits of living in the gorge, from good clean water like we have here in our fountains, to fishing and hiking, to skiing and swimming. And I want these resources to be available for future generations. I believe it is their right. Yeah. Yes. As an Oregonian, and as Oregonians, we have struggled for many years to act responsibly about our natural resources. We have had some good leadership, like Governor, uh, Governor McCall, who led us in that whole recycling um, episode, you know, where we really got into recycling and helped to lead the nation in it. Now I am asking each of you to act responsibly as Oregonians to send the message, not just one message, messages, to Governor Gitzhopper to provide his leadership to this, to this action. Send messages to the members of the Oregon Nat Natural Resources Department to tell them you do not support the sale of our water for profit. Right. Investigate the facts. Ask the questions. Is this a good move for our state? No. Is it looking at immediate gains? Yes. And for whom? Nestle. Or yeah. is it considering the consequences for the future? No. Um, Senator Dingfelder of, uh, Dingfelder of Portland is the chairwoman of the Senate's Natural Resources and Environment Committee. And she states, it allows a private, multinational corporation to use a public resource for economically and environmentally unsustainable practice of bottled water. Most, I mean many, when I looked on Google, I checked into Nestle and over half of the places where they are currently bot um, have bodily water, they have lawsuits. And Terry told you about the situation in Michigan. It costs, and who is it costing? I, I learned at Portland State University, 
follow the money. Follow the money. Yeah, and who's going to get the money is Nestle. Who is going to pay it out with lawsuits and roads, road rip, uh, and loss of tourism, and how many other things we could lose is going to be the state. And so we want to ask Kitzhopper, say no to Nestle. One thing I am sure that Nestle's most important priority is profit. And at what expense? Ours. Ours. Air quality, tourist industry. Will the jobs they promise be for Oregonians? I think Terry mentioned that. No, they bring in people from outside. Are they going to be paying a living wage? Or is it going to be minimum wage? What about the loss for our farmers as the groundwater table is affected? Effect on wildlife and hunting. A repair of roads. The impact on the Columbia fishing, barging, recreational activities. These questions do not have definite answers. But I look at Nestle's record and I say no. I do not want this international for-profit company to get a foothold in my state. They get a toehold and what happens? They have a giant footprint. That's what they leave. And so, even though studies show that most people in the United States do not need bottled, bottled water, and surely we don't, we had liquid gold here today. Yeah. Water from the tap is, has more regulations than bottled water. We get better water from the tap. That's a known, studies have shown that. In addition, as, as Barbara mentioned, it costs a lot more to bottle the water up. And so, follow the money and who has the power. Secondly, I was educated by the Sisters of the Holy Names, attending St. Francis School, St. Mary's Academy here, Merrillhurst University, Portland. I am a Portlander. I am a Columbia Gorge person. But I decided to join the Sisters who have served in our schools for over 150 years. Um, they have, and, and Barbara said, what else happened in 1859? Oregon became a state. Very good. A little history lesson, uh, lesson. Hundreds of sisters have taught in schools throughout the state. Not only taught, but they have worked in social services, in prisons. They have fought for the rights of workers and also fought for the right to a good education. They taught me to study the issues, judge what is, was best now and for the future, and act on our convictions. We need to make our voice heard. Good, good, voices, voices. More recently, as Barbara mentioned, we made a study of water and water rights. And in 2008, we corporately declared that water is a sacred gift that connects all life. And that access, yeah. And access to clean water is a basic human right. Okay, now we're going to come to the questions. Okay, here, you're going to answer yes or no. So be sure you listen to the question. We Holy Name Sisters and Associates declare that access to clean water is a basic human right. Do you agree? Yes! Yes, good. Then send a message to Governor Kitzhaber. Use your leadership. Say... No to Nestle. We say that fresh water is a shared legacy, a public trust, and our responsibility as Oregonians is to protect it as a sustainable, renewable resource. Do you agree? Yes. Good. Then send a message. No. Okay. A little louder, please. That was kind of down. Yeah. We say that all have a right to clean water and that it should not be sold for, fro for profit. Do you agree? Yeah. Then send a message to Kitzhopper. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, so I encourage you to study the issues, pass the word, decide what is best for us for the present and also the generations to follow and act. And you have several opportunities here today to act. Thank you very much. So right now, we're going to learn a really quick, super easy chant, and we're going to leave a message on Governor Kitzhopper's line. 
Water is a human right. Don't let Nestle win this fight. Water is a human right. Don't let Nestle win this fight. Awesome. I think you guys got it. I mean, it's got such a great rhythm to it. So I'm going to, I've got his number actually dialed into my phone here. So actually, I'm going to say this message is for you, Kids Hopper. And then I'm going to turn the phone around. And you guys say it right then. Does that sound like a plan? We'll do it that way. Hello, uh, we are have we have a message for Governor Kitzhopper. Here you go. Water is a human right. Don't let Nestle win this fight. Water is a human right. Don't let Nestle win this fight. Water is a human right. Don't let Nestle win this fight. Awesome. I think you got the message. <laughs> Drinking away our water while they torture and wreck the land. Our salmon were made for spawning like the stars were made to shine. Oh, Ness, they gonna profit from our water, pump it out till the spring runs dry. Oh, no. oh how can I ever stand it? Oh, to see them big trucks drive. A hundred or day, maybe more See them clog up 84 Oh, yonder stands old Nestle With a plastic bottle in his hand They're drinking away our water While they torture and wreck the land Plastic bottles to yourself. We'll join California and Washington. Tell you greedy boys who go to hell. 